Pop Spotlight, brought to you by Dragon's Lair Comics and Fantasy. Hey everyone, I'm Adam Harry from Bulls Tabletop News with Drake from Dragon's Lair Comics and Fantasy. And we're back with another Tabletop Spotlight. Drake, now I see that you have paranoia in your hands here. I do have paranoia. What? But this is a special bundle. What's going on here? What do we got? Well, paranoia uh, ran a Kickstarter recently. Yep for uh, kind of a, a revised edition of the game. We backed it, and so we have retailer uh, bundles for everything and then some that you would need nice. to actually start playing Paranoia, which I realize it's a little late for some people, <laughs> but it's, it actually yeah. is available, published. But this, is, this is the new edition of Paranoia now. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. I had played a couple games of Paranoia XP back in the day, and I've heard stories of even older versions of Paranoia. If you don't know what it is, Google it real They're quick. They're always tales, back. right? But exactly. Those are the anecdotes. The anecdotes of playing Paranoia. Uh, it's a super awesome RPG. I'm pretty excited about this to take a look at the new edition. So, uh, would you like to jump in and speak with a great computer? Yes. Let's do it. I'm. I'm. Let's head into the uh, <laughs> Alpha Complex. Here we go. All right, we've got Paranoia, the new edition here. We've already uh, taken the wrapper off though, so check this out. We've got two cards. This is all the Kickstarter stuff, right, Drake? Yep. So we've got two, two different cards. Fun is mandatory. <laughs> uh, we've got dice, which you will need dice. Uh, and then we've got, what do we got here, Drake? I believe these are character sheets. Oh. Like laminate card stock. Yeah. These are nice. Like. Yeah, hard to write on. Uh, hard, well, not hard to write on, but. <laughs> hard. Hard. And comma, you can, to write on. Right. <laughs> That's what I was trying to say. Commas are important. Um, you can use a dry erase, wet erase marker on this too if you yeah, want to. Awesome. Yeah. Cool character sheets. These are nice. And there's yeah six. Adam, is that a typical paranoia game? Six you weeks? can you can play. Uh, it's a it's it's a it's an RPG setting. So you can play right. as as many or as few players as you want. I personally don't like playing with more than like say six people at a time unless it's a special one off situation. But like I'm talking like a a, a game master and you know, up to five players is probably pretty manageable. You could go six in this game, yeah. This is pretty, this is, this is pretty like, minimalistic, like this is, this is not a big character sheet. No, 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 no. Yeah, you've got part one, which is just the core information, it's your name, security clearance, all that fun stuff. <laughs> security Mox clearance, by the way, Moxie. security clearance, by the way, is done based on color, like Roy G. Bibb style. So, yes. so the different color you are could determine what you have access to, which is a really fun thing. Uh, then you've got development, and then uh, skills and well-being and equipment. So it's a short equipment list. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's on purpose. Uh, let's keep going here. We've got the books, which are kind of the cool part. We're gonna fan them out here for you. This comes with four different books. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got the guide to Alpha Complex. Uh, I believe this is your uh, <laughs> fluff book. I think the fluff. Yeah, the the lore. The, the yeah. The uh, walk you through what's happening. Yeah. In setting. I'm pretty sure uh, this is the only guide to the Alpha Complex that is authorized by the computer. So I believe that the players can read this. I think this is meant for the for the players. Yeah, I'm pretty it. sure yeah. they are. Um, they in are meant in conjunction with the player's handbook. Yeah. Players will be known as troubleshooters, by the way. And uh, you work for the computer, so. Official troubleshooter use only. Yeah, so players can read this. Players are supposed to read this one too. Um, this is the player's handbook. Um, talks about core mechanics, rules. We'll go through that one here in a bit. We'll come back to that. I just want to show these other one, other two off you kick real quick. We've got the Game Master's Handbook. This is only for the player that is running the game for known as the computer. Um, <laughs> because I'm the computer, that's why. Um, in Paranoia, it is discouraged from questioning the computer um, because, one, it slows the game down because this game's it's pretty goofy, let's be honest. Uh, it can get really serious, but there's a lot of goofiness in there. You're playing uh, characters that are cloned, that have weird defects and can do mutant stuff and are part of secret organizations. And the, and the computer probably knows all this and has set up the scenario for you to fight it out or mess with each other. And that's the beauty of it, of this game, is it's supposed to make you paranoid. <laughs> um, <laughs> who can I trust? Yeah, who can you trust? But uh, the players are not supposed to read this book, only the game masters, so. Yeah, it's uh, not like, it's, oh, if the more people who understand the rules, the better. Like, this, this is actively prohibitive. Yes, this this game uh, teaches you the core stuff and the core rule book that you're supposed to know, and then you're not supposed to know how other stuff works. It's 
Uh, it can be frustrating for some players who want to know all the rules, <laughs> but that's not how this game's supposed to work. Like, it's supposed uh, to make you, it is supposed to make you a little frustrated because it's the on the computer and that's why. <laughs> Uh, last but not least, we have the mission book here. We're not going to go through this one in its entirety, but I'll flip through some pages. I imagine quick. this is also like, actively for the GM. This is only for the, the GM. It talks about uh, how missions work. Um, mm. Yeah, it's a quick intro real quick. Uh, yeah, there are, this is kind of a, a, a scenario book. It's got three adventures in here for the um, game masters to read through. If you're a player, this is for the game masters only. Um, but this teaches you how to run a, a game. If you're a game master that's brand new, you want to start probably after you've read the book. You want to you want to go through this and kind of figure out how adventures work because this game's a great breakdown. If you're an experienced game master with no time, this book will help you run an adventure straight out of the book, and you're good to go. Yeah, <laughs> stop reading. Give this book to the GM. Your player who's too excited. <laughs> stop. Yeah. Each session, again, a typical R, uh, RPG session, probably two to three hours, maybe more if you really want to extrapolate it out. But again, these two books, GM only. Do not read. You'll you'll spoil the fun for yourself. And if you're the type of person that's okay with spoilers, you're playing the wrong game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the other two books real quick. Over there. So uh, we're not going to go through the guidebook because go read on par uh, go read up on Paranoia. It's actually a lot of fun. Um, it's a fun setting. So yeah. Players will assume the role of these uh, mandatory duties here. Ooh. So, science officer, happiness officer, loyalty officer, team leader, combat officer, and equipment <laughs> officer. Um, what'd you read? I'm reading the typical equipment for the team leader. Yeah. A megaphone, a laser pointer, and an easily identifiable hat. Yeah. Important equipment. Uh, it's fun because as you play the game, uh, the idea is that you're not playing a class so much as you're playing your, uh, your role. Uh, in terms of like your science officer plus two science officer thing. So if it's stuff like, hey, uh, the players find some goop on the ground, the science officer's like, oh, well, I will analyze the goop. But if you're the loyalty officer and you're like, I will analyze the goop, oh, that's not in your uh, purview. That's a, that's a science officer's job. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark that down and report it to the computer that you're trying to do stuff outside your role. And you just mess with people that way. Because uh, the players are supposed to mess with each other too. It's, it's part I of the Yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> player's handbook. Oh my god, this looks awesome. <laughs> this game, if you've never played it, again, this is where you want to start as a player. If you, well, yeah, you want to technically start here and then and then go here. Go here. How to be a troubleshooter? Again, players are assigned a rank essentially based on color. So, uh, Roy GB of style. Uh, red is low, and uh, violet is high. There's also Infrared, which you're not supposed to know about, and uh, ultraviolet, which you're really not supposed to know about. But uh, yeah, it's fun. <laughs> there's the character sheet. Uh, how this game works, there's four stats. Violence, brains, mechanics, and chutzpah. chutzpah. <laughs> you got a chutzpah. Uh, it's kind of like your charisma. Yes. Um, it also has different skills that are used with um, uh, those stats, for example. If you're high in violence, you probably have high stats in guns and melee or throwing our athletics. Um, yeah. And it kind of goes from there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you're filling out. Character creation here. Uh, it'll, it'll take you through that session. We won't go through how to do that, but you can kind of, uh, kind of wing it. <laughs> it's supposed to be a fun thing. And again, the best part is you're playing as, you're going to be playing as clones. Uh, you're gonna die. Your characters are gonna die in this game. Frequently. Frequently, probably, <laughs> and probably in horrible, painful ways. Uh, that's that's how it happens. And uh, you you have clones. You can also like save state, kind of, and like upload your personality to the next clone at that point, and um, carry on from there. Um, you can also just play like single shot solo character solo character generation. So Those clones are expendable. Yeah. <laughs> clones are expendable, which means players are expendable <laughs> because right. when you die, your clone just comes back. Um, core mechanics, you're rolling dice is uh, D6. It's a D6 base game and you're trying to hit um, target numbers. There can be negative nodes, negative modifiers and things like that. But it's basically a D6 game. And again, it's an RPG. So this is really just a toolbox to tell a different story. 
and <laughs> there are secret societies. There are also mutants. Um, I well, in Paranoia XP, there are mutants. I don't know if this one has it, mutants, but I'm pretty sure. It was mentioned alongside the secret societies. Yeah. So part of the fun in this game is that as a, as a, a member of Paranoia, the, as a troubleshooter, typically you are assigned a secret society. Of not You're not supposed to tell anybody else. And you're also assigned a random mutation, which can be, you know, something weird. Because be cloning, cloning yeah. got issues. Cloning, <laughs> you might have a, a be able to be psychic, telepathic, telekinetic, uh, pyro, pyromantic, you know, things like that. Um, and you're supposed to keep that stuff hidden, and players can use that as ammo against you to do certain things, like later on, if you want to be like, hey, you better do that thing that I need help with, otherwise... I'll tell the computer I'll that tell the you're... computer you're... Exactly, exactly. And that's why there's an equipment officer who's got like a recording device. <laughs> so sometimes you want to make sure that guy goes missing. Oh. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, Paranoia, really fun setting. Uh, it's it's kind of goofy, uh, kind of dramatic. It can get dark really quick. <laughs> and it can be really lighthearted if you want to just have a fun lighthearted RPG session. Uh, you can actually do that in Paranoia. I've run some one shots with it uh, in a previous experience and uh, it was a ton of fun. Just when people kind of finally get like the whole like, oh, you're the computer and like, you're just kind of a dick. <laughs> and we're supposed to just, okay, okay. I do what the computer says, everything's fine. Um, yeah, it's a very loosey goosey kind of system and it's really enjoyable, a lot of fun. So I'm glad that they made a new edition. Um, yeah. Drake, any thoughts? I want to play. Yeah? <laughs> Would you want to play as a uh, troubleshooter or the computer? Both. Both? Yeah. Simultaneously. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. The ultimate look. What happens if you need to reboot? Ew. Yeah. Questions. I don't know what that means. The best thing about this game, too, I think, is that if you make your own Game Master screen, you can just write loading on the front of it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, with that's a, a loading bar. That's something. And then you flip it up the other way and it's like download complete. Yeah, boom. All right, let's hop out for a really quick recap. Well, that was the Paranoia Kickstarter bundle. Really cool stuff. Everything you need. <laughs> Everything you need. You and had all some. the books, the character sheets, the dice, the decks. I mean, you really can't just jump right in with Paranoia. Again, if you've never played Paranoia, this is the perfect thing to get. And you guys have it because you backed it, right? Yes, we backed it on uh, retail level, so we got this retailer bundle. Okay. Very uh, cool. That is everything. It's the it's the get started kit. Right on. And uh, this is out, I guess, available to select retailers. Now. Right now. Uh, what is the price point for the new Paranoia Kickstarter bundle? Ours are priced at $44.99. Right. So check with your local gaming store. That may vary depending on how they yeah. price it. it, it how they Kickstarters it. are always subjective unless it's like kind of set. We yeah. Uh, we have our bundle set at $44.99. Yeah. Very cool product. I'm super stoked about this again. The nostalgia is strong with this game, and the computer is my friend. So uh, <laughs> go check it out. It's in stores right now. I'm Adam Harry from Bulls. I'm Drake with Dragons Are Comics and Fantasy. And this has been another Tabletop Spot. Thanks again for watching. Tabletop Spotlight brought to you by Dragons Are Comics and Fantasy. Thanks for watching.